It's time for another On The Bench segment and today, today on the bench I've got, see this little 5 volt 5 amp UBEC from Hobby King, these are actually quite cheap and I was surprised to find when I pulled them apart, as I've shown in another video when I had one that didn't work, that there's actually two little boards, there's two identical boards that sit inside these things, so they go that way, and they're just stacked on top of each other, so you end up with actually two 2 amp or 2.5 amp UBECs inside the one package so it makes them quite cheap because you can just cut the wires and then you can use them as individual UBEX if you only need a couple of amps of uh, of current but what I've done here is I needed a power supply for something a little different I've got my quadcopter and I wanted to put some bright LEDs on it now here are some 1 watt LEDs but these use about 3.3 3.4 volts each to give maximum brightness and of course um, if you put that across your three cell LiPo they just go bang so what I wanted to do, I only wanted to use two of them, I need to drop the voltage down to about 6.6, yeah, 6.8 .6, volts, maybe 7 volts. I could have done that with a resistor, but in that case, a lot of the power is going to go up in heat. It's just going to waste the power out of the battery, and I don't want to do that. I want maximum flight times out of my multi-rotor. So I thought, well, why don't I just modify one of these? So that, well, actually, instead of putting out 5 volts, it puts out about 6.8 or I think oh, I haven't measured it yet but about 6.8 6.9 volts so how do you do that how can you turn a 5 volt UBIC into a 7 volt UBIC well actually it's a lot simpler than you might think and I'll do a close up here I'll do a bit of a zoom in so you can see exactly what I've done so here's the board this is a close up look at the little board and what I've done is you can see there's a, a resistor here that I've added I'll just move this so that it's in shot there's the resistor I've added way up here at the top just move that down that resistor there I've actually ended up putting from this pin of the chip over to the, the ground, the, the negative. Because what I'm actually doing here is effectively putting this resistor at the top there in parallel with a much smaller one down here. Because this, these are the resistors that the board uses to set its regulating voltage. So all I've done is change the resistor network so that effectively this pin here needs to see a voltage and it will try and hold the circuit at whatever output voltage maintains the specified input voltage on this chip. So basically, um, by changing these resistor values, you can change the voltage on the output that's required to get that constant voltage on this pin. So all I've done is I've put another resistor across one of those resistors on the divider, the one that actually divides the voltage down to ground. So effectively, I've pulled the voltage down a little bit, which means to make up for that, the output voltage has to rise. So instead of being 5 volts at the output, it's now nearly 7 volts. And so the other advantage is, of course, this is a switching UBEC. It's a switch mode thing. So I don't waste a lot of power as heat. These are you know, up to 90% efficient. So I don't draw a huge amount of current out of my battery to drive these high power LEDs. Let's have a look and see how it works. So over here, I've got my lab power supply. Currently, it's doing 11.1 .1 volts, which is more well, 11.0 sometimes, which is the equivalent of a three cell LiPo, yeah they do charge up to more than that, but the nominal voltage is 11.1 .1 volts. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that 11.1 .1 volts, which is on the end of these crocodile clips, and I'm going to hook it up to my little circuit down here. Now these are the white LEDs, I better, I've just disconnected them for the time being, I'll just join these wires again so I've got a complete loop in the circuit, so the LEDs will go. Now I can't leave the LEDs on for long because we're actually putting a watt of energy into both of them and they do get very very hot if you leave them going so let's hook this up I shall put the negative lead on and I'll just momentarily put the thing up there we go look how bright they are eh? Woo -hoo, that's pretty impressive now as I say these there's 300 milliamps of current flowing through these LEDs to get the one watt it's about 3.3 volts with 300 milliamps or something like that I forget the exact stuff but let's have a look over here on our, on our supply and see how much current this is drawing remember 300 milliwatts are going through the LEDs over here we're only drawing 150 milliamps 160 milliamps so how does that work how can we draw less current on here than is actually going into the LEDs well that's how switched mode power supplies work or switch mode regulators work they effectively transform the voltage to a lower level and in doing so they change the amount of current that flows. It's not just like using a resistor. If we'd use simply a resistor in series with these LEDs so that a whole lot of voltage was dropped across the resistor, then this setup would draw 300 milliamps from our battery. So it would draw twice as much as if we do it with the switched mode regulator, the UBIC here. So by doing this, we're only drawing half the power. So our LED lights would run twice as long on a given amount of battery capacity, or they'll have half the effect 
when it comes to depleting that battery because that's the main flight battery on our multi-rotor. So there you go, that's something simple. Now you could obviously, there's plenty of other options here. I know a lot of people who run four cell packs want or need 12 volt outputs for their FPV gear. Now since this little regulator will deliver it realistically about two amps, you could change these resistor values so that it put out 12 volts. So then your four cell pack could feed your FPV gear with 12 volts, your camera and so forth, and you'd be chuffed to bits. And as I say, because these regulators here are so damn cheap, and you get two boards in the one packet, then hey, it's worth buying some of these, just have them laying around and just bodging them like this so you can produce a voltage regulator that'll output almost any voltage. Now, obviously this resistor here isn't gonna stay tied up in the breeze. What I will do is I will get in there and I will solder a resistor right across the one that's there, or maybe even take out the one that's there and put a new one in. But to give you an idea just what's involved, let's have a really close look at that circuit board. Okay, so here's a really close up look at the circuit board. And honestly, I haven't bodged this. This is the way it comes. The soldering on these is really quite bad uh, out of the factory. But this is the little resistor here that we're actually putting our uh, new resistor across. It's a tiny, tiny little resistor. But uh, what I'll probably do is, I'm not sure if I have any of that small. I'll just shunt another resistor across here. I'll just put one on top of it. Instead of this one with the wires, I'll use another surface mount one. Just put it on there. But uh, if you've only got resistors with wires, then you could just put it in there because the wire goes from, the resistor goes across here to there and just put it across there, put a bit of plastic insulation on the legs and away you go. Now the other thing to watch out for is this device here, this is a tantalum capacitor and it has a maximum voltage rating. So if you're gonna go to 12 volts, I don't know what the voltage rating on that capacitor is, but I'd be tempted to take that off and put a separate capacitor across there, an electrolytic capacitor, you know, something you can find anywhere. In, uh, in fact, you can pull it out of old radios or TVs, or whatever, they're bound to have heaps of the electrolytic capacitors you can throw on there. Doesn't need to be very much, um, probably 40, or no, probably 100 microfarads, if you know what that is. But there you go, that's how you can repurpose one of these little regulators here to do things other than just drive your RC gear. And there's not a lot to them, is there? I mean, it's pretty simple stuff. But as I say, the soldering is awful. I, I resoldered this because it was all bodgy as. And uh, now I shall use it for driving the LED lights on my multi-rotor. So here we go, I'm tidying it up. This is the one that I've modified. This is the, like they look, this is what they look like when they, you cut the heat shrink off and separate the two boards. Obviously I mentioned that capacitor there. And these are only, I think six volts capacitors. I haven't checked, but they're probably only a six volt capacitor. So I've pulled the capacitor off this one. And then I've put my resistor in here from the, this pin here on the integrated circuit right across to the negative over here. And I put some heat shrink or some little plastic tubing on the leg so it doesn't get any chance of shorting out. And I'm going to replace this capacitor with a regular electrolytic, which looks a little bit like this. I'm not focusing on that very well, but that's, I'm putting out a 47 microfarad electrolytic, and I'm gonna put that where this other tantalum used to go, which is basically between this pad and that pad. So that's that bit, I shall now put the electrolytic on, and you'll see what it looks like when it's finished. Okay, so here's the final job all done. As you can see, I have fitted the electrolytic capacitor here. It's soldered across the negative and the positive, and the wires for taking the voltage out to my LEDs is soldered on there. So yeah, that's it. She's all finished, it's reasonably neat. I could uh, put some heat shrink around it just to keep it all together, and in fact, I probably will put some heat shrink around it eventually, but there you go, that's the, whoops, did you get my hand in here so I can show you? That's the result. It's, it's not the best, but it was done in a hurry so I could show you on this video. Now what I've, what I've done is I've made a little table up which I'm putting in the description of this video telling you what values of this resistor will give you what voltages on the output. And in fact, I'll give you a little formula as well. So if it's not a voltage I've got in there, I'll do what done. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 12 volts. So you can set it up to suit yourself. So if it's, uh, if you want another voltage, I'll put a formula in the description so you can actually calculate that, get your little spreadsheet out of your calculator, work out the value for this resistor between that pin and the negative, and then you can modify one to suit yourself. That's how you hack one of these Hobby King dual Ubex. Um, if you've got questions, put them on the bottom of the video. If you think the video is useful, give it a thumbs up. Where's my thumb? There it is. Give it a thumbs up and tell other people. Thank you for watching RC Model Reviews. I'll see you again very soon from The Binge.